let's say that for a given female patient, we can obtain 8 basic health-related features. Based on these features, we want to decide whether the patient is likely to have diabetes or not. The simplest approach is to ask a doctor for a diagnosis. To get a more reliable answer, we could ask several doctors and then decide based on the most frequently occurring response. Comparing these two approaches, one expert versus many, we notice that different doctors study in different universities, work in different hospitals, see different patients throughout their careers, and therefore pay attention to different aspects of test results. By voting across several doctors, we reduce the chance of a random error by any one doctor and allow diverse expertise to inform the decision. It turns out that we can do something very similar with an algorithm. In our case, the base algorithm will be a decision tree. If you are unfamiliar with decision trees, I prepared a separate video about this very practical method. Now, let's recall the key idea. Suppose we have a dataset with 500 non-diabetic and 268 diabetic patients and our goal is to diagnose new patients. A decision tree builds a structure of yes-no questions that guide us to a final classification. In theory, the best possible split is the one that separates the data into two uniform groups. One group for one class and the other group for other class. In real life, perfect questions almost never occur, so at each step the tree tries to find the best available question, the one that makes the resulting groups as uniform as possible. Once the tree is trained, diagnosing a new patient means answering those yes-no questions down the tree to reach a final decision. Decision trees are easy to explain visually, even to non-experts, and they can use both numerical and categorical features. On the other hand, a single tree is prone to overfitting and small changes in the data can produce very different trees, so they can be unstable. We can mitigate both issues by using more than one tree at the same time. However, if every tree is trained on exactly the same dataset and considers all the same features at each split, then all those trees will be identical and might be as well reduced to a single tree. To mimic our many doctors idea, we will apply two tricks, so that different trees see different data, often even repeated samples, and focus on different information. And this is how random forest works. We create many decision trees, where each one is created based on subsets of original dataset, and sees different features during creation process. The first trick is about the data each tree sees. For every tree, we draw a random sample with replacement from the original dataset, and we repeat this process until we get desired number of samples, usually equal to the size of the original dataset. This is called a bootstrap sample. Because we sample with replacement, some patients may appear more than once in that sample, while others may not appear at all, just like some patients visiting one doctor more often and another doctor not at all. We repeat this independently for each tree, which creates a diverse collection of training sets. This diversity is exactly what we want. It decorrelates the trees so that when we average or vote across them, the overall model becomes more robust. And this approach is known as bootstrap aggregating or bugging for short. The second trick is about the features each tree considers at every split. 
Instead of letting a tree evaluate all features to choose the next question, we randomly select a subset of features. For example, with 8 total features, we might allow the tree to consider only 3 at a time. The tree then finds the best split using only those 3. At the next split, we draw a new random subset and choose again. This encourages different trees to focus on different aspects of the data. This technique is called feature bugging, also known as the random subspace method or random feature subsampling. After training, when a new patient arrives, each tree gives its own opinion, its predicted class, and we then aggregate those opinions using majority voting to produce the final decision. Putting these ideas together gives us the random forest. We create many decision trees where each tree is trained on a bootstrap sample of the data and at each split it considers only a random subset of features. The final prediction is determined by voting. As we may already know from previous video, Decision tree was first introduced and used in 1979 and even though bugging and random feature selection were proposed in 1990s, it was only in 2001 that a formal description of random forest was developed by Leo Breiman. The same year Windows XP was released. How does a random forest compare to a single decision tree? We lose interpretability here, because instead of one clear path of decisions, we now have dozens or even hundreds of trees. But luckily, there is a method called feature importance that can give us information about which features contribute most to final decisions made by random forest. We can see that some features appear more often in trees, some less, some almost never appear in trees. Also, some features contribute more in splitting data to more uniform groups than others. The higher the contribution, the greater the feature importance. For our Pima Indians diabetes dataset, we see that glucose and BMI are much more important when diagnosing diabetes than insulin or skin thickness. Because the random forest is built from trees, it inherits their ability to handle both categorical and numerical data. Moreover, it mitigates their weaknesses. It is less prone to overfitting due to having many decorrelated trees and it's far more stable since averaging across trees stabilizes predictions. It is however slower than a single decision tree since we have to create or query many trees, but that's a minor inconvenience compared to the accuracy and robustness we gain. And this is why random forest is one of the most widely used methods in machine learning and data science. In real projects, many data scientists use it as a first pass when approaching a new classification problem. Thank you for watching.